Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new, my name is Katarina. Today I am going to be continuing my decluttering series that I started in April. I have decluttered my nail polishes and perfumes in one video and in another video I decluttered all of my face makeup. So today we are going to be decluttering my eye makeup. This is everything that I have right now, but I'm going to go through everything today, including all of the single eyeshadows. So this is going to be a long video, be warned. But yeah, I just wanted to show you kind of like an overall look where we are at the moment. I don't think this is completely out of control, but especially what comes to eyeshadows, I really do want to downsize my collection. I do store everything else except eyeshadows in these two baskets, and these are in my vanity drawer. There are some things that I know I can let go of, but probably not too much. Then these are all of my single eyeshadows, so loose eyeshadows over here, and then a couple of C palettes filled with pressed single eyeshadows. And then everything else is eyeshadow palettes. These two baskets I do store in a separate shelf and they are palettes that I'm not using at the moment. And then in here, in this container, I do store palettes that I am using. So either seasonally appropriate palettes or palettes that I am panning. And this I do store on top of my vanity. What comes to eyeshadows, I think my goal would be to fit all of the palettes into one of these baskets that I do have two of and I think I should be able to do that if I just let go of a couple of palettes. That being said, majority of my palettes I do really enjoy but hopefully there is a couple that I could let go of and what comes to single eyeshadows I really do want to declutter some because I am not using nearly all of my single eyeshadows. But yeah, just wanted to give you an overall look of my collection before getting into decluttering. Let's start with everything else except eyeshadows and let's then do my singles and then last but not least my eyeshadow palettes. Okay, so as I told you already, I do have all of my other eye makeup except eyeshadows stored in these two little baskets. And in the basket, in the back, I do have just backups. So I always like to have a backup for lash glue and my favorite brow pencil and also some false lashes. And then in the basket, in the front, I do have everything from brow pencils to mascaras to eyeliners. I'm going to empty the baskets and let's then go through these things in categories. Okay, so let's start with brow products. As you can see, I don't have too many and in ideal world I would only want to have my favorite brow pencil and a backup ready to go for that. And my favorite is the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I use the shade Ash Brown. This is just my favorite. I do love the price tag of this as well as the formula and this color is perfect for me. However, I do have another brow pencil. This is the Pixi Natural Brow Duo. I don't really love this anymore. This used to be a favorite, but not anymore. It's just not precise enough for me. That being said, I don't hate this product so much that I couldn't use this up. So I'm trying to get it used up, but I won't repurchase it anymore. Then I do have one brow powder palette. This one I got from my The Pip Box Advent Calendar last holiday season. So this one is from a brand Amabel Minerals. So this one has one highlighter. It is like a white shimmery highlighter. And then it has two brow powders. I have not used this and I think I'm going to declutter this just because the only thing I really think is perfect for me in this palette is the shade in the middle. The shade in the right is, I don't say it's too deep for me, but it has a little bit of red in it and I don't necessarily like that. I do have platinum blonde hair. So I do want my brows to be cool toned, even though I don't mind them being darker, I want them cool. And I don't like that red tone that the other brow powder has. And also the white, I don't really need it. I do have a white shimmery eyeshadow that I can use for highlighting if I want to. So yeah, this one I'm going to declutter. I think for example, my sister who has a darker brown hair, would get used out of the entire thing, unlike me who would really get used out of only the middle shade. 
Okay, so over here I do have all of my eyeshadow primers and I also threw in one cream eyeshadow that I have. So I do have a regular eyeshadow primer right now. I do have the Urban Decay anti-aging one, which I do really like. I like Urban Decay eyeshadow primers a lot. I think they are the best when it comes to the formula. But to be honest, I don't love the packaging that much. So these come with a doe food applicator. And I just feel with a squishy tube, it's easier for me to control how much product I'm using. So yeah, the packaging is not my favorite. So maybe in future, I will choose to stick to the Milani eyeshadow primer. But for now, this is what I have and I'm going to totally use it up. I also do have the e.l.f. glitter primer and this has become a favorite of mine. Most of the times I do like to set my eyeshadow primer before going in with mattes just so that I have easier time with blending and that the look doesn't get out of control and super intense because I'm not going for a really intense look every day. However, I feel if I set my eyeshadow primer, the simmers just won't pop as nicely. So because of that, once I'm done with the mattes, I like to bring this one to my lid so it is a staple product. This one, however, I think I'm going to declutter because this is really old. This is the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil and it is in the set Milk, so it is the basic white one. And this one is something that I have been using under some brighter eyeshadow colors, if I put colors like that to my lid. That being said, I have bought this, I think, in 2016, so it's just way too old, so it's time to let go of it. And anyways, I only use this, let's say, maximum 10 times a year. And I think if I want to have a bright base going on, on my lid, I can just use concealer. I don't feel I need to have a separate product. Then this is my only cream eyeshadow. I got this one from my sister and it is a beautiful rose gold color. This is from a brand Mina. So because it was a gift, I'm going to keep it. I don't know how long it's going to stay good, but I will try to get use out of it as long as it is good. But cream eyeshadows, liquid eyeshadows, I don't like to purchase myself because I do just prefer powder formula. Okay, so over here we do have all of my eyeliners. Eyeliner that I use almost every day is a nude pencil for my waterline. So this one is from BH Cosmetics. It's their power pencil in beige. This one is amazing. It is really waterproof and it is that beautiful brightening beige. So this is what I use almost every day, so of course I'm going to keep that. I also purchased the same pencil in kind of like a skin tonish shimmery shade. And I don't really use this shade. It is beautiful, but I really don't think it pops on my waterline. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted to buy it because I had a pencil like this when I was a teenager. But nowadays, since I do have just the standard beige one, I don't really get use out of this. If it's something that I don't use, I don't want to have it cluttering my basket of eye products. So yeah, I'm going to declutter this one. Okay, then I do have from Catrice, their Inside Eye Call Kayal. Oh, I'm a little bit on a hands about this. So this one is like a black waterline pencil and I really rarely do wear black waterline and in future I would prefer to have just like a pencil like this that is black and waterproof because this kind of Col Kayal that is retractable it's not that user friendly I think if I want to it's really difficult to line my lash line with a product like this so I think this is only a waterline pencil however since I don't have a black pencil eyeliner at the moment I am going to keep this, but in future I do want to stay away from packaging like this. Alright, then I do have from Gosh their Velvet Touch Eyeliner in the set Truly Brown. So I do have this one that is almost gone. It's going to be a couple of times that I will be able to sharpen it. And then I do have a backup for that. I actually don't remember when I have last used this, so I honestly don't know if I should keep the backup one. That being said, I do think if I want to go for a dark waterline, I do think brown is more wearable on me. So I'm going to keep these two, but first I'm trying to finish this one that is almost gone. And if I just don't end up loving it anymore, maybe then I will let go of the backup. But for now, I'm going to keep both of them. 
I do have two liquid eyeliners. So first the Revolution Renaissance eyeliner. And I'm really disappointed with this one because I bought one of these last year and I absolutely loved it. It was like the best liquid eyeliner that I have ever used. However, once I bought a replacement, the replacement, which is this one, ended up being a dot. This one is just super dry, it doesn't perform similarly. Well, now it applies better. No, not anymore. I feel if I want to get decent amount of product from here, I really need to press hard and then I do lose control of the thickness of the line. So this one just doesn't perform the same than the first one. So because of that, I am a little bit disappointed. I mean, it is a cheap product, so I don't mind that much. But in general, when I purchase a makeup product, I would love to get what I do expect. And sadly, it didn't happen with this one. So I'm going to declare this. And since the Revolution eyeliner ended up disappointing me after buying the replacement for the first one, I decided to move back to using my Bare Minerals Lash Domination Ink Liner. I really do enjoy this. I know it's a high-end eyeliner, however, this one is amazing. Plus, this one lasts a long time. So with this one, I don't need to press hard at all and I will get really intense line. This one also has a felt tip that is really fine and it is easy to do a precise wing with this one or a precise line. So yeah, this is just my favorite. And from my previous experience, this one stays good at least for six months. So because of that, in my opinion, it is worth the money. I'm going to keep it and in future, I'm going to stick to this. And then last, I do have two of the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Eyeliners. I do have the one in Midnight Cowboy, which is the gold one. And I do have the one in Glamrock, which is the silver one. Now, the Glamrock one is really disappointing. It does not perform as well as the Midnight Cowboy one. It hardly picks up any of that glitter. Yeah, it's not too good. That being said, I'm going to keep it for now. Because this kind of product I don't want to give for anyone else and this one is still usable. So I'm trying to get a little bit more wear out of this. However, from my previous experience, these expire after about two years. I used to have the Midnight Cowboy one previously too and after a couple of years it started really irritating my skin. So once that happens, I'm going to declutter this. Glamrock one and I'm not going to repurchase. The Midnight Cowboy I'm going to keep. This one I really do love. This one performs so much better. I hope you can see it. I don't really know if the camera picks it up. But the Glamrock one is just not good. The Midnight Cowboy one is amazing. So yeah, I don't know if glitter eyeliner is something I really need in my collection. Probably not, but if I want to have one color of glitter eyeliner, it is gold for sure. I especially do love doing like cut crease with glitter eyeliner. And this one is really, really amazing, but it is not something that I use that regularly. So I need to think about if I'm going to repurchase when this one goes off. But for now, I'm going to keep both of these. Okay, let's move on to lashes and mascara. At the moment, I do have two mascaras. So I do have one normal mascara. This is the Essence Maximum Definition Volume Mascara. I will say this is not really that volumizing, but I don't know. I don't really expect it from mascara anymore. I tried to really get into mascara, but I have just realized that if I want to make my lashes look nice, I will need to do false lashes because with mascara, no matter if I use waterproof one, it may be because this one that I do have, this is the Essence Volume Hero waterproof mascara. Maybe it is because this is cheap, but no matter if I use this one or a normal mascara, my mascara will throughout the day smudge to my lid because I do have hooded and oily lids. Otherwise, this mascara stays on and if I'm being completely honest, it is a pain in the butt to remove in the evening. Nowadays, if I really want my lashes to look nice, I'm just going to wear false lashes. Anyways, for me, you know, the application process of false lashes, it doesn't really take any longer than the application process of mascara with curling the lashes. And then I know false lashes will look better throughout the entire day. 
and I just feel more put together with lashes. So yeah, long story short, I don't even expect my lashes to look nice with mascara and this one is perfect under the false lashes and on my lower lashes, so I'm going to keep this. However, this waterproof one I'm going to declutter. Okay, I do have a couple of lash glues. I'm at the moment using the House of Lashes one. This is my favorite, however, it's not that easy for me to get anymore. I can get it from Lugo, but not from Beauty Bay anymore, sadly. So I have purchased a backup lash glue, actually from Tarte. We'll see if I like this. But yeah, I always have one lash glue open and a backup ready to go because lash glue is one of those things that it may just like end up drying a little bit sooner than you expect. All right, then we do have my false lashes left. Although I do love wearing false lashes, I don't want to have too many different styles because I don't really need more than one style. So my favorite ones are the Ar Ardell Demi Wispies. I do have this multi-pack of backups and I do have this House of Lashes lash case and in here I do have the Ardell Demi Wispies. I'm sorry, this one is dirty. And I also do have here one pair left of the Ardell 1-1-10 lashes, which they are really natural and they are so natural that they basically look like mascara. So yeah, I'm not going to purchase those again, but the Demi Wispies are what I'm going to stick to. However, this last case I am going to declutter because this one stores at least three pair of lashes or if you store them like I am, so that they are on top of each other. This would store like six pairs and if I only use one pair of false lashes, I don't need this kind of bulky lash case. I mean, this one is really pretty, but I just don't need it and it feels bulky and it feels it's cluttering my drawer. So I'm actually going to declutter this one and for now I'm going to move the lashes to this multi-pack so that I do have some place to store them, like that. Okay, then let's go through some random things that I do have in my eye drawers. So first I do have here one lipstick back up. So this we are not going to talk about today, but I'm going to do my lip product declutter next. So you will see it then. Then I do have some tools that I am storing on my eye product basket. So over here I do have some tweezers. This thing is from Tweezerman and one of these tweezers are also from Tweezerman. They are really good, I got to say. I have had these I think for six years and they still perform so perfectly. They are what I plug my brows with. And then I do have one pair of tweezers that are not sharp. So these are what I use to apply my false lashes because I don't want any sharp tweezers close to my eyeballs. I do have here one pair of scissors. So these are the ABH brow scissors. These are really meant for trimming your brow hairs. I don't really have enough brow hairs to trim them, but I do trim false lashes with them and sometimes there might be something else where I do need this. Okay, I do have here a lash curler and you know what, I'm going to declutter it. First of all, I kind of find curling my lashes a little bit awkward. I, I'm kind of afraid that I'm going to pull my lashes so that they come off. But also, I think if I curl my lashes, it just makes the issue of my mascara transferring to my lid worse. So I feel if I don't curl my lashes, maybe that doesn't happen so easily, but if I curl them, that is going to happen for sure. So yeah, for me, it makes my lashes and my eyes look worse. All right, then I do have two sharpeners. This ABH one I have had for years and it has just, you know, it's not the same anymore. It has gotten to the point where it ruins my pencils instead of making them nice and sharp. So, you know, I just think sharpener is something that it needs to be replaced once in a while. I think I have had this two or three years. So I recently bought this Charlotte Tilbury one that is new and that I'm using right now. Okay, so I feel the boring part of this video is now done and we can get to the exciting stuff, so eyeshadows. So let's start with my loose eyeshadows. So this little tin packaging is from Geek Chick Cosmetics. It is their Win or Die collection and it comes with six loose eyeshadows. And then over here 
I do have all of my other loose eyeshadows. So I'm just going to empty these. I do have 21 loose eyeshadows, I think, at the moment in my collection and I at least want to cut this down to half because I just, I don't really like loose eyeshadows. I think they are messier to use and some of these I don't even like that much and some of these are nothing that special. I haven't bought any loose eyeshadows in years, all of these are bought in 2018, I think and I have decided not to purchase them anymore but I know some of these are so special that I cannot let them go. So very first there are a couple that I know I'm going to keep for sure because they are the Lord of the Rings themed and there is no way I'm going to get rid of those even if I never wear them on my eyes which actually one of them I cannot wear on my eyes because it's so glittery that it irritates. I still want to keep it forever because hey it's the Lord of the Rings themed. So they are these three eyeshadows over here. So these are also from Geek Chic Cosmetics. They used to have a similar collector's theme like this that was called The Fellowship. Unfortunately, when I found out about the brand, they didn't have that collection available anymore, but they did have three single eyeshadows from that collection. So I purchased all of them. So the one that I cannot use is this one. It is called One Ring and it is just like a gold glitter mess. But as I said, it's the Lord of the Rings themed, so of course I'm going to keep that. This one is called I Am No Man, and this is actually something that I really do love. If I want to go for a cool, don't neutral look, this is what I love to wear on my lid, because this is actually a light and wearable lid color for that kind of look. And then the last one is called Samwise the Brave. So this one is a really, really dark and intense shimmery brown. It is actually really, really stunning. So yeah, these three I am going to keep for sure. I have been a little bit on a hands about this. So yeah, this is the Win or Die collection from Geek Chick Cosmetics and it is Game of Thrones themed. And I do really enjoy Game of Thrones. It's a little bit difficult for me to let go of this. And I think this is that kind of product that I either need to keep the entire box or then I need to let go of the entire box. Because it's kind of like a palette, just in a loose form. However, I'm going to let go of this. I'm going to turn it like this so you can see the colors. I don't really think there is anything unique in here that I don't have anywhere else in my collection. So yeah, I just don't think I need this and I don't love Game of Thrones as much as I do love The Lord of the Rings. So yeah, I think I can let go of this. Okay, keeping it fantasy themed, I do have four loose eyeshadows from a brand Brisha Cosmetics. And these are from their Boy Who Lived collection, which is Harry Potter themed. I do really like Harry Potter, but not as much as The Lord of the Rings. I think from these, I want to keep a couple because I really love the colors, but a couple of these I think I don't really need and like, so I can let go of those. So the ones I'm going to keep are this one, this is called Phoenix Tears, and it is a shimmery orange. Now, something that I have been wondering is that a lot of warm neutral palettes have a matte orange in them, but not that many warm neutral palettes have like a true shimmery orange. And sometimes I am in a mood for shimmery orange, so this is my favorite, so I'm going to keep this. Then I'm going to keep this one too. This is called Shouldn't Have Shade That, and it is inspired by Hagrid. I'm actually going to show you a swatch of this. I'm not going to be swatching everything so that we don't have to be here forever. But this eyeshadow is what I want Gilded Ganache from the Chocolate Bar palette to be. This is a similar sort of color, but it is actually like pigmented and intense and not dry. However, these two I am not going to keep. So this one is called Scared Butter and it is kind of like a limey sort of green. I do love lime green eyes though, however, I do want it in a matte formula. And then this one is called You Know Who. This one is actually originally a highlighter, but I took it in the eyeshadow jar size. And I'm glad I did because it's nothing unique. It's just like a shimmery white. I do have a pressed single in similar color, so I don't feel I need to keep this. Okay, so something else that I think I can declutter are these four. So these, 
Actually, the, all of the rest of the eyeshadows that I have here are from Aromaly, but these are from a collection that actually is discontinued now. It was something insect themed. I just don't really like these eyeshadows. First of all, these two are like light purples and I don't know, I just don't love them. They are a little bit too bold and glittery for me. And then the green, it's like a light green with blue sparkles to it. So I think for me the blue sparkles are a little bit too much. If it had like yellow or gold sparkles, I might actually keep it. But yeah, it's just kind of like a little bit too cool tone for me. And then this one is just like a standard gold. It's nothing special, so no reason for me to keep it. Okay, then I do have four other loose eyeshadows left from Aromaly. I know I'm going to declutter this one. I just don't really like this. It is kind of like a mauve purple color with some blue sparkles to it. It's just not my kind of thing. I think this kind of color is really unflattering on me and I did wear this a little bit in the beginning of the year and I feel every day that I wore this I had a bad makeup day. It's just not something that makes me look good, so I'm going to let go of it. I'm kind of wondering if I should keep or let go of this one. I'm not sure if it is special enough, so this one is another kind of like shimmery orange, but it does have like some green sparkles to it. And then I do think this one might actually be kind of similar in color, but just a little bit more wearable. This one is actually called Lacerta. This collection was inspired by some women in history. So yeah, it's not like they are the same thing, but I think this is more wearable. And it's just kind of like a beautiful, like pure metal sort of eyeshadow and not glittery. And that's actually what I do prefer in shimmery eyeshadow formula. So yeah, I'm going to keep this one, but I'm going to let go of this one. Okay, then this I am going to keep. This one is called Sultry Plume and it is from a collection that was inspired by poems written by months. And this one was inspired by June and June is my birth month. So yeah, this is a beautiful eyeshadow and it feels kind of like special to me. It is a light pink with some green sparkles to it. Yeah, it is quite intense. It's really something I would mainly use as a highlighter, maybe if I'm feeling kind of bold as my lid color. But yeah, it's beautiful, so I'm going to keep it. Okay, so here's still a quick result of this loose eyeshadow declutter. I am really happy. I did way better than I thought, so my goal was to cut my loose eyeshadow collection down to half, but I only kept seven out of my 21 loose eyeshadows and I decluttered 14. So that means that I decluttered two thirds of my collection. And I can really say that the ones I kept are really something special to me, either the color or the theme or whatever. Okay, so I do have all of my pressed single eyeshadows in these C palettes. I also do have this Tarte palette that I do store on top of my vanity. And in this palette, I store eyeshadows that I'm trying to use up at the moment or that are seasonally appropriate or whatever. I emptied this. I do have only one eyeshadow here because it's like, I don't know, one or two uses and it will be gone. Then I do have here a couple of highlighters, but for the sake of this declutter, I wanted to have all of my eyeshadows in these storage palettes so that I can look at them all at once. And what comes to these palettes, these are just meant for storage. So I do have the extra large C palette over here. I do have all of my standard size round eyeshadow pans. Then I do have the double sided C palette. On one side I do have all of my square and rectangular eyeshadow pans. And then on the other side I do have all of the other round eyeshadow pans, so either smaller or larger than the standard size. So let's start with this one. I'm maybe going to take you just a little bit closer. Okay, so in this palette, the top row are the potted eyeshadows and everything else is makeup geek. The first five shades in the top row are the potted from the Balm Shady Lady Special Edition palette. I love these eyeshadows. Now these are satin finish eyeshadows and I think I'm like the only person in the beauty community who likes satin eyeshadows. I feel almost everyone hates them. But I actually do really love these because these are beautiful lid shades. I feel they are way more 
wearable on everyday basis than something super shimmery or foiled or <laughs> something like that. The two other shades in the top row are the potted from the Pacifica Solar palette. That palette I would not recommend. I think that was actually quite a bad palette. But these two eyeshadows are really good, especially this bronze one. This one I'm going to swatch to you because it is so incredible. This is exactly the kind of eyeshadow that I love. It is so lightweight, but still it is so pigmented and it's just like pure metal. It's absolutely amazing. Sadly, the other eyeshadows in the palette were not formulated the same. Now the rest of the shades are Makeup Geek. The only shade that is not foiled, this shade over here, this is called Anarchy. Everything else is the foiled formula and I actually don't like the Makeup Geek foiled formula. So considering that, I do have quite many of these. I just think the foil formula is not that great. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but a lot of these have hard panned. Yes, it does pick it. So especially here, you can see it. This is called curtain call. This is in the spotlight. You can see the hard panning. Plus, I just don't really like the texture. These are like really gritty and thick. And when I put these to my lid, they feel heavy. I don't like that. I way prefer this kind of kind of like lightweight metallic formula. And I think a lot of these eyeshadows I actually do have somewhere else in my collection. So I might end up decluttering most of these. At least this one, this first one, it's called Legend. I'm going to declutter. I don't even like the color. This is called Magic Act and it is like a light yellow gold. You know, I actually do have a similar color here in my other palette. Now, these eyeshadows on the bottom row here are from a brand I no longer support. Sadly, they are one of the best eyeshadows in my collection. I hate to admit that, but these are pretty good. So this gold over here, it is like pretty much the same thing than the Magic Act from Makeup Geek, but in way, way better formula. So this is more kind of like lightweight, but still just as intense. It just doesn't feel that pretty and weird. So the Magic Act one, I do not need to keep. Then this one is called In the Spotlight, so it is a peach. I'm so annoyed that it is hard panned and I actually think I'm going to declutter that one too. Because again, in my storage palette, just on the other side, I do have this eyeshadow over here. And then this one is called Flame Trover. I don't even wear a copper eyeshadow that often and I know I do have these in eyeshadow palettes and also in my other singles if I want to wear a copper. So Next is Grand Stand, which is one of the most popular shades from Makeup Geek. I have hit pan on this, but I need to, I just need to declutter it. So when I got this eyeshadow, I dropped it. So my eyeshadow shattered and I picked it from the floor and pressed it back there and it just bothers me. Like every time that I use the eyeshadow, I feel kind of gross that it came from my floor. I'm not exactly sure about this one. This is called Luna and I think it is a beautiful color. Hmm, this is like a rose gold that is a little bit cooler. Uh, I just don't really like how this makeup geek eyeshadows feel, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So there you can see it. It is this one. I feel this is kind of like less pretty and this one has not hard panned yet. But I actually want to compare this eyeshadow to an eyeshadow from a palette that I know I will be keeping later. So this is the Seattle London Olivia Palermo palette and over here there is a rose gold that is so so stunning. Oh my gosh, I love the way it feels. So I want to compare this. No, they are not the same. The Luna one is more pink and kind of like a little bit brighter. So you know what? I do want to keep the Luna one. And then this one over here is called Anarchy. So it is the only Makeup Geek eyeshadow that is not false that I have. This is actually pretty unique to my collection and I like, like this. I do actually prefer this formula over the fold one. But I'm kind of on a hands about this one. This is called Curtain Call and it is a stunning eyeshadow. I do want to swatch it. But I'm annoyed that it is hard panned. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I want to watch the Anarchy one next to it. I mean, they are not the same. I think I'm going to still keep the curtain call even though it has hard panned because it's actually unique to my collection. Okay, then I do have Chester, which is an olive green. I know olive green is like everybody's favorite, but for some reason not mine. I don't know. I just don't think it's a color that does that much for me. 
And I know I do have a similar color in an eyeshadow palette later. I don't need that. Then this one, hmm, I'm not sure. This is called Charmed and I used to really enjoy this, but nowadays I don't know if this is that special. Like it's kind of like a silver that has a little bit of green in it, but I don't really think the green really comes through that much. I don't know. It's it's not that special. Like if I want to go for silver, there is a shade in an eyeshadow palette that I would way rather wear than this, so I don't need it. This one, however, I'm going to keep, so it is called Pegasus, and it's the only like turquoise that I'm probably going to keep in my entire collection. I actually do really enjoy that eyeshadow. Okay, then let's move on to the double-sided C palette. So over here I do have other round pan eyeshadows. So the small ones are deposited either from the Colourpop I Think I Love You palette and the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition palette. Now you might be wondering why I do have empty pans here. I do have a couple and that's just because I like to keep my empty pans until the end of the year so that I can then see how many eyeshadows I actually finished. I'm going to keep all of these smaller round pans. Some of the ones from the BH Cosmetics palette I think I want to try to finish at some point. What comes to the large pans? The two fairest plus the mint green are from the Juvia's Place the Douche palette. Then this eyeshadow over here is my favorite top eyeshadow. I actually want to swatch it. This is just like the perfect top because it's not too dark. Oftentimes top is so dark, but this is just, oh my gosh, look at that. And this eyeshadow is from Essence. It is the Essence Mono eyeshadow in all I need. Then there is this peach over here. This is from a brand Floss and I got this one from my The Beatbox Advent Calendar. But yeah, this one I'm going to keep, especially since I decided to declutter the Makeup Geek Fold Eyeshadow. Because yeah, this is a formula that I do prefer. Maybe I will swatch this one too. Uh, it is not super metallic or anything, but it's just this beautiful shimmer. So yeah, from this side I'm not going to declutter anything. Hopefully I could declutter something from here. So these are all of my rectangular and square pants. These ones are deposited either from the Ball Meet Matte Nude or Meet Matte Rimoni palette. So they are just basic mattes. I like all of them, so I'm going to keep all of them. Then I do have these two small rectangular ones. They are from the Balm Balm Words 2 eyeshadow palette. And yeah, I'm going to keep them. One day I would like to finish the bronze one. However, the balm eyeshadows are actually pretty hard to hit pan on and finish because they are quite hardly pressed. The smaller square eyeshadows are from the BH Cosmetics Foil Eyes Cool to Go 6 pan eyeshadow palette. I actually think I'm going to declare the gunmetal eyeshadow in here because the empty pan was a silver and the only reason I kept the gunmetal was that I could use it in combination with the silver. However, now that the silver is gone, I don't really see that I would use this gunmetal. And I do have some gunmetal eyeshadows in an eyeshadow palette that I will be keeping. So the Naked Smoky from Urban Decay, in case if I ever want to wear a gunmetal. So yeah, I just don't think I will really wear this eyeshadow. But the other eyeshadows from the palette I'm going to keep. Plus the empty pan until the end of the year. And then the eyeshadows from He Who Shall Not Be Named. I'm going to keep probably all of them. I, I think they are great eyeshadows. By the way, I did not hit pad on this one organically, but the palette was a pain in the butt to the pot and I had some casualties. So that one cracked a little bit then. Even though I'm not going to purchase from the brand anymore, I'm going to keep this. The only one I'm kind of on a hint about is the yellow because it's kind of like, it's so bold, but I think this is a great, great quality eyeshadow. Oh my gosh. Just so smooth and so pigmented. So I think I'm going to keep it. So yeah, I don't think I did too good with this palette. However, I have already kind of like decluttered the palette when I deposited it because I don't want to keep anything that I don't enjoy. So I have 10 gotten rid of the shades that I don't enjoy. But I'm still pretty happy with the result of my singles declutter, especially since I was able to let go of some of those Makeup Geek eyeshadows because I just don't like them. I just don't like the formula. And yeah, this one I just don't see myself using anymore. So really happy with this. 
Okay, so last but not least, we do have my eyeshadow palettes left. I do have 17 at the moment and I know it's not like completely out of control. I know eyeshadow palettes are something that a lot of people here on YouTube like to collect. But I would like to get this number down. I am on an eyeshadow palette no buy at the moment, so if there is something lacking from my collection, I need to look for singles rather than purchasing more palettes. I don't know, I just think I'm not necessarily an eyeshadow palette person because I'm so picky with palettes. Usually with every single palette, I do have something to complain about. That being said, majority of my palettes I do like, so I don't want to declutter something that I do enjoy. The most important thing for me is just not to buy any more palettes and try to get use out of these that I have. Anyways, I thought we could start with the palettes that I am panning at the moment, so they are over here. I'm not going to show you my modern renaissance right now, this is my Pandat palette, because I haven't updated my Pandat palette in a while, I took a little break. I'm sure I can get this one used up by the end of this year. This one is my another Pandat palette, this one you can see through it, but to be honest, I don't really care about showing some spoilers with this palette that much because, I don't know, it's not that exciting to pan as Modern Renaissance. But yeah, this is the BH Cosmetics Modern Matte Eyeshadow Palette and I started panning it in the beginning of this year, but quite quickly after that I decided that I will only pan it until midway through the year and then I will depot this palette. And then the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette, this is my oldest eyeshadow palette. This one I was panning in my 30 by 30 project pan, but I will be ending all of my other project pans except my Panda palette. But I'm thinking of rolling this palette back into my Panda palette, because this is my oldest palette, I do really love the color story, and I would love to hit pan. I don't know if I will be aiming for finishing eyeshadows anytime soon after finishing Modern Renaissance, but I really would love to hit more pan on this palette at least, so this is a keeper. It is old, it is six years at this point, but it does still perform, but probably at some point it comes time to let go of this palette, but for now I do want to keep this. Okay, so these two palettes are something that I have had on top of my vanity, so let's start with the Lime Crime Venus XL2. Now, this was supposed to be my palette of the month for May, but I also decided to quit my Palette of the Month series because I have not been feeling the best recently. I have not worn makeup every day and it just feels too much for me to have my Panda palette going on and then the Palette of the Month. And to be honest, right now I feel I am not in a right headspace to really use this palette. And that's because I have been so focused on panning the shade Venetian Red from Modern Renaissance and I have worn a lot of pink makeup looks during the past four months or so and honestly I'm starting to be kind of like over of pink makeup. I'm just, I don't want to wear a pink makeup look like in a while now. And in this palette almost a third of the palette is pinks. Because of this I think I'm going to now put this one back to my collection and I'm probably going to revisit this palette next spring because I know this is a palette I wouldn't get that much use out of other than in the spring and summer time but for now I just feel I cannot really make a decision about this palette and I do really want to give it a fair shot but at this point because I'm so over pink eyeshadow I just need a break from it. Okay so this palette is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette and it is the last palette that I purchased before my eyeshadow no buy that I started. This is a beautiful color story. I have actually not used it yet. But this one I'm planning on keeping on top of my vanity and trying to get some use out of it. Okay, so I do have two palettes from Juvia's Place. Let's talk about those next. So I really do love Juvia's Place eyeshadow formula, but I don't really love their palettes. <laughs> I have had a couple of more of their palettes, but I just didn't love the color stories. But these two palettes that I have, I actually do really like. This is the 
Nubian palette by Juvia's Place and I actually really do like this palette. Several years ago all of the brands were coming out with this sort of palette that was like really warm burned neutrals and this is the palette with that kind of color story that I have. I actually really do enjoy this. I will say the other two palettes that I had with Juvia's Place I think there were some really really poor quality shades but here everything performs amazingly so this is a keeper for sure. And then the Nubian 2 eyeshadow palette by Julia's Place. I absolutely do love this palette. This is probably my favorite palette from my collection. What comes to the color story purely. I love it. I love it how it is a combination of some neutrals and some colorful shades. So yeah, I'm definitely going to keep this palette. Okay, then I do have three travel series palettes from BH Cosmetics. I'm going to keep all of them. So first of all, a couple of these I have not yet used. So the Beautiful in Barcelona. For me, this is kind of like late summer and fall sort of color story. So right now I don't feel like using it, but I'm sure I'm going to get use out of it later this year. And then this Midden in Switzerland I have also not yet used. So this is a really interesting color story. It does have some color in it, but mainly it is kind of like a little bit more cooler to neutrals and some mauve shades. And honestly, I feel I am right now in a mood for using this palette. So I'm going to take the Lime Crime Venus XL2 out of the container that is on top of my vanity. And I'm going to put this one there. And then I do have the Love in London palette from BH Cosmetics. I really do love this. This is like a cooler toned neutral eyeshadow palette. And I like this because it is so versatile. There are so many different cool toned looks that you can do with this palette. Okay, so this is the first palette that I'm going to sadly declutter. So this one is the Brew eyeshadow palette from September Rose Cosmetics. I really want to love this palette. I love the theme, I love the packaging, and I love the color story. So let me show it to you. It is Got a, like a really bold warm neutral palette with some pops of color. However, unfortunately this formula is not good at all in my opinion. First of all the shimmers, they're, they're not good. Especially the shade Cold Brew is horrible. Iced Tea is a little bit better. But then again I find it's weird that there are like two gold shimmers. I think the palette would be way more versatile if there was like one gold shimmer and one bronzy shimmer. What comes to the mattes, I don't even bother showing them to you because I think they are that kind of mattes that they don't really perform on the eyes the way I expect them to. Like they do have some pigment in them, but if I shed my eyeshadow primer, like I usually like to do, they just apply patchy and the pigment doesn't want to transfer to my lid. So the only option for me to use these mattes would be to not set my eyeshadow primer. And I feel in that case, because these colors are a little bit bolder, I will really quickly lose control and end up with something super bold. Okay, then we do have the last stack of palettes here. I'm starting to be pretty tired and I feel like out of breath, so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so the Ciate Olivia Palermo palette I already mentioned earlier when I was talking about my singles that this I am going to keep. So this is kind of like my perfect rose gold palette. I absolutely do love these shimmers. This gold is one of my favorite golds in my collection and the rose gold is gorgeous too. The mattes are just kind of like okay but I do really enjoy this palette and yeah this is also a little bit older in my collection so I feel I need to get more use out of it and also at some point I would want to try to hit pan on at least something in this palette. Next is the Urban Decay Naked Smoky Eyeshadow Palette. This palette I do have this sentimental attachment to because this one has traveled with me to festivals and I have created some party looks with it. So there are so good memories attached to this palette that I can never let go of this. Although this palette is not really an everyday palette. It's not something that I reach for too often, but if I am in a mood for a smoky look, I know where to go. So I'm going to keep this palette for sure. Okay, so next is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette. This is the original one and this palette is no longer available, but at some point it was reformulated vegan. 
and this is like the original non-vegan version and I think when the brand rebranded this palette I think was then discontinued which I think is a shame because this is a great all matte palette Unfortunately, I have not used it that much. I think I have been focused on panning some matte eyeshadows. So because of that, this one has gotten a little bit less use. But I do think it's a really useful palette. And it's definitely something that I want to keep. Okay, so next is the BH Cosmetics Glam Reflection Rose Palette or Rosé Palette. This one was my palette of the month in April. And I did decide soon after April that I am actually going to declutter this palette. Now, this is amazing formula. This is definitely one of the BH Cosmetics better eyeshadow formulas. I don't think there's a single dot in this palette. However, some of the shades are so repetitive that it annoys me. And I just feel the palette is not that versatile. Plus, I find it's a little bit weird that there are these two really warm shades, but then there's really nothing that goes with them as a lid shade, for example. So yeah, I'm just not that inspired when I look at this palette and I think everything in this palette except maybe for the yellow, I do have somewhere else in my collection and this yellow is pretty useless to me. It's just like a hint yellower than my skin tone so there's not that much that I can do with it anyways. So yeah, this palette I'm going to declutter. And then the ELF Opposites Attract Eyeshadow Palette I'm also going to declutter. There's only one shade in this palette that I really do love. It is the shade Happy and it's the only true mustard shade in my collection. However, I don't think it is worth it to keep 18 eyeshadows for the sake of one eyeshadow. So I'm planning on purchasing like a mustard eyeshadow single and this palette I am going to declutter. Another shade that I kind of do like is Wise, but actually in this palette I do have a similar shade to that. So I like to think of this palette as two sides, so a warm side and a cool side, and the cool side I just don't like. Witty I have been wearing as a brow color, so because of that there is a dent there, and Wise, as I said, I like. But everything else, I just think it's kind of like murky and a little bit too dark and not that kind of cool tones that are flattering on me. And what comes to the warm side, I like some of the shades, but I still don't think it's quite cohesive. And in general, I think this palette is one of those palettes that is kind of like all over the place, but not cohesive. And then last, maybe least, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I love this palette, but it is a Christmas themed palette, so it's something I'm really not going to wear that much other than during holiday season. This is the Give Me Glow Cosmetics Christmas Morning eyeshadow palette and the color three screams Christmas. I think the only shade I can see myself really reaching for outside of holiday season is Santa's Lie. That is the most perfect silver ever. Also, Pajamas is a gorgeous shade. I want to swatch these shimmers to you because they are like out of this world. I have never seen as gorgeous shimmers. I mean, look at those. Whoa. <laughs> they are so intense that I would really never wear them on everyday basis. But for a holiday or something else special, gorgeous, gorgeous shimmers. So yeah, this palette I'm going to keep. Although it is something that I would only wear during quite short period of time in a year. Okay, so I do still want to show you that even though I only decided to declutter three eyeshadow palettes, I am now able to store my palettes so that in here I do have palettes I am panning at the moment or that I just want to get used out of otherwise. And then all of the palettes I'm not using right now are in one of these baskets. So one of them I do have now free and I can store them something else. So that was my goal, really, with this declutter, and I am really happy with it. So I decluttered three eyeshadow palettes, and I decided to keep 14. And two of them, so both of my palette palettes, will be leaving later this year. So after that, there's 12 palettes left in my collection. The main thing for me right now is to not buy any more eyeshadows, and when the time comes to let go of something, you know, the time is 10, but meanwhile I do want to enjoy the palettes that I do have. But yeah, really happy with this result. Although eventually I would like to get my palette collection down to 5 or something like that. We are far away from there, but I think the direction that I'm going for is right. 
Okay, and here is still a quick look into everything that I decided to declutter. I am really happy about the amount of eyeshadows I decided to let go of. Of course, there's three little bit larger eyeshadow palettes, so that helps with my numbers a lot. But also with the singles, I'm surprised I was able to let go of so many of my Makeup Geek singles. Also, what comes to loose eyeshadows, I'm glad I was able to let go of so many. And I can truly say that the ones I have left are something really special to me. Either what comes to the color or the theme or whatever. Then I decided to declutter some random stuff that I just don't like or that I don't use. The next declutter is going to be a lip product declutter. That should be interesting because lip products are my favorite products. I might have a little bit hard time there, but I know I do have some really old and nasty lip products that just need to go just because of the age of the products. So yeah, that's everything for today. Thanks for watching and see you in my next one. Bye bye.